So now let us talk about an object which we come across always in our day to day lives. Such shapes that I'll be talking in this lecture are known as circles. So we'll be seeing what circles are, how do we define them, what are the basic terminologies related to that, properties and everything about the circles starting from this chapter. So before coming to that, let us first try to understand what are basically circles, how do we define them. Can you recall these objects shown in the video? In the screen you can see a disc, a wheel and the well-known object a moon. This is a disc. This is a wheel and this is moon. What is common among them? Can you tell me? As you can see in the figure, all the three shapes shown here have a circular structure. Say if I take, let us join this like this, I get a shape and if I take any point here and take any point here, this point is always at an equal distance from this point. You take any point on this edge. This point will always be at equal distance from this central point, right? You take any point here. Similarly, see for this figure also. Let me draw the boundary. So on this boundary, you take any point, And this is my central point. This point will always be at the same distance. You consider whatever point you want whatever point wherever it is on the boundary, it will always be at the same distance from the center. Similarly, see for this moon. Let me draw the boundary. This boundary, take any point on the boundary. That point will always be at the same distance from the central point. So this is the unique property which defines circular figures. And this is how we basically come across circles. You take any other example. You have many things which have this property which look like circles, for example, bangles, coins, circular caps, etc, etc. A lot of things which are having a shape of a circle. So then how do we define circle? What is the basic definition of a circle? Let us see that. The collection of all the points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in a plane is called a circle. Looks complicated? Nothing. Let me write that for you and let, then I will explain what it is. The collection of all points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in the plane is called a circle. The collection of all points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point, right? Let me say this is the fixed point. This is the fixed point and I want a collection of all those points which are equidistant from this point. Say I have a point here which is at a distance, say some L from this point. Then I want another point which is also at a distance of L from here. So this is the point. Again a point which is at a distance of L from this. Again a point which is at a distance of L from this. The collection of all such points will make a diagram and this thing this pattern will be called circle and as you might be knowing this fixed point is known as center of the circle and this fixed distance is known as radius of the circle right so let me draw this properly this is my circle this will be my center and this distance denoted by r will be my radius and you take any point on this boundary, this will always be at a distance of R from the center. So this is how we define circular figures or circles. So after knowing what a circle is, now let's move on to a few basic terminologies related to circles. Now the basic thing and the foremost thing that we studied here 
that a circle always has a center and radius. You can never ever define a circle without its center and radius. These are the two basic building blocks of a circle. Now, as I as you can see, I have a circle. This is my center and the radius is R. Let me take any two points. Say this is point P on the boundary and this is point Q on the boundary. Let me join P and Q, right? So I joined P and Q through a straight line. This line PQ is known as chord of the circle. It may or may not pass through the center, not necessary, but chord of a circle is formed by joining any two points on the circle. Remember that the two points should always lie on the circle. Say I have a point R here and S here. If I'll join R and S, I'll get another chord. Say I have a point A here and B here. If I'll join A and B, I'll get another chord. So P, R, P, Q, R, S, A, B are examples of chord of the circle. And remember that it is not necessary that they should always pass through the center. They may or may not pass through the center. So based on this, we have two cases. If the chord passes through center, if the chord passes through center, then it is known as diameter of the circle. And if it does not pass through the center, then it is simply the chord of the circle, right? So I have a circle here. This is my center and I have a chord which passes through the center. Now I know that from the center, so this is point A, this is point P. The distance will remain fixed. This is my radius. This is point O. And similarly from O to B, the distance will be same. So this will again be my radius. So diameter is nothing but the chord which passes through the center. And the length of the diameter is two times the radius of the circle. And this is how we define the diameter of the circle. So as of now, few things are very clear that we have studied how to define a circle, its radius, its center, and what is the diameter. Also, you can say that diameter is nothing but the longest chord of the circle, right? If I'll ask you, how many diameters can be drawn in a circle? Can you tell me the answer? I have a diameter here. Again, I can draw a diameter here. I can again draw a diameter here, like this, like this, like this. So in a circle, I can draw infinite number of diameters. Only the condition is that line should pass through the center. And always remember that that diameter will be the longest chord of the circle, right? Because chord is nothing but you take any two points on the boundary, join them, you get the chord. Diameter, this is a special case of the chord, which is formed by joining two points such that the line passes through the center also. So this is how we define the diameter of the circle.